You know, when you find a good story, you just have to tell it. At least I do. I spent about 10 years documenting the Memphis Fire Department with video during a, a huge decade. I call it the decade of change. And during that time, I ran into some individuals that I got to see start from the beginning in fire school, became rookies, and move on up the ladder. This is the story of one of those. My first encounter with that particular firefighter was at a very large fire at a Walmart in Memphis. At that point, it was the largest fire I'd ever seen. I wound up going back to the scene so I could do some stand-ups. At the same time, I had some interviews scheduled with ATF and some of the investigators on the scene to find out what happened. I was making it into a story. But anyway, the story kind of develops where I get an opportunity to get a great shot, an overview of the entire fire scene. You get to see the burnout shell of that Walmart. The Memphis Fire Department were giving members of the media rides and I thought I would take one as well. And I kind of felt sorry for the firefighter that was having to give rides to members of the media. As I got close, I realized this firefighter was a woman. And I thought, well, that, that's kind of cool. And I noticed she was kind of shy, kind of quiet, didn't say too much. And that was my first meeting with a young fire private named Gina Sweat. And of course, today she's risen to great heights. So this is part of that story about Gina. And again, I got some great shots. I thought, wow, I'm gonna get some shots of the lady firefighter because there weren't that many at that time that were on the fire department. Fast forward a couple months later, she'd been on the job for maybe about a year, maybe a little more. She finds herself at a fire that, that I'll never forget. And that fire was 750 Adams. And Memphis lost two firefighters that night. And as that was going on, I noticed that same firefighter I met earlier at this Walmart fire that gave me the ride had a different look on her face. And she seemed a little more seasoned. And I noticed she was very concerned because we were bringing down a firefighter didn't know for sure what the state was, but they were doing CPR on him. That firefighter was Lieutenant Larry Mathis. As soon as they got Lieutenant Mathis down on the ground, I noticed the same firefighter, this private, jumped in and began doing CPR on Lieutenant Mathis. And she pretty much moved everyone aside and jumped in there. I remember thinking that was that young lady firefighter. And I could tell there was a passion there at that point that she hadn't, I hadn't seen in her eyes early on. I think that incident and that moment was a defining moment for her and her fire career. And I can look back on it for many reasons. And again, it's something those of us that were on the scene, we all share. It's a tragedy you, you never forget. But the story goes on. A few months later, there's another very large multi-alarm fire that took place at an industrial plant. I think it was the Firestone plant in Memphis. It had been closed, but there was a lot of smoke coming off of that. There was an engine that was laying out scene, and I remember asking the lieutenant, you know, what are you doing? And there next to him was one of his privates. That was Gina Sweat, and got to see her in action really proves she was there, she did the job. And uh, one of the things I noticed just looking at her face was that she was paying attention, she was interested in learning, and she was listening to those who had experience. And I think that was another key part of Gina. You know, again, we're talking less than two years on the job at that point. I asked her lieutenant about Gina, what kind of firefighter she was. And he said, she's good. She listens. She uh, works really hard. She knows her stuff. Very complimentary of her. That was pretty amazing. So that's gone viral, that video of Gina on the scene. You can find that on our website at emergencyfd.com, even on our YouTube channel. It's up there as well. A few years later, I'd heard she had been promoted as a driver and I uh, rode up the scene of another, it was a high-rise fire. And at that time she was a driver, the fire had got under control. And I remember turning my camera and a lot of the guys as usual running away. And Gina 
and another firefighter. Both drivers were sitting on the edge of the apparatus. But it was neat to watch her go from being a private now to a driver. And then later things changed. I heard she was promoted, became one of the first female lieutenants. There was one more before her that I'd been working with. And I was asked to videotape and document a weapons of mass destruction drill. They were pretending there was some kind of a gas attack at a venue in the city of Memphis. And they're trying to see how I guess the department and engine companies would respond. So I took a ride on the first company in, and I remember going in with that crew, and they they were hit with a lot of these victims coming up, and essentially that crew got contaminated. They didn't have much of a chance. A short time later, several other engine companies started arriving, and I noticed in the distance there was a crew, and all of them were standing there with pike poles, axes, and tools in their hands. I noticed this crew moved forward and then I started videotaping that crew and it was Gina Sweat, Lieutenant Gina Sweat and her crew. And her goal, I could tell, was protecting her firefighters. Her team was not gonna get contaminated. I took my job very serious and that was a drill, but I was determined that my firefighters, my team, my company, we were not going to get contaminated. I always yeah. took taking care of my, my team serious. And even though we all knew that was a drill, but you know, play like you practice. You know, if you practice doing it right, then when the real time comes, you'll do it right. Yeah, and that's what she said in the podcast. Her crew didn't get contaminated. And after she started this you know, corralling individuals with pike poles and controlling that crowd and keeping her team safe, other firefighters, more seasoned lieutenants were coming in with their crews and following her lead. I was really impressed with that. And that to me showed me what kind of individual she was. You know, that was many years ago, but it was exciting to watch her progress in her career. And now, she's gone on up. Some cities call them commissioners, and Memphis is called the director of the fire services. She is that leader of that department. And it's kind of cool because now my son recently came on to the city of Memphis a few years back, and it was kind of a proud moment watching this person who went through the ranks work the job to get in leadership. And here she was pinning my son, uh, his badge as he joined the City of Memphis Fire Department. And so that's my story of Director Gina Sweat. You can find the Emergency FD Storyline podcast on our website, which is emergencyfd.com, and check out 20-03 and 20-04, the two podcasts, and you can find those at our website, emergencyfd.com. Also on Apple, Google, Stitcher, Spotify, many more. Check them out. And again, thank you so much for listening and watching this story. Hope you enjoyed it.